The Kraft Music Hall with Bing Crosby, Trudy Irwin, John Scott Trotter and his orchestra, Frank McHugh. And here are Trudy Irwin and Bing Crosby. There's a bright golden haze on the meadow. There's a bright golden haze on the meadow. The corn is as high as an elephant's eye. And it looks like it's climbing clear up to the sky. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I got a beautiful feeling. Everything's going my way. All the cattle are standing like statues. All the cattle are standing like statues. They don't turn their heads. As they see me ride by But a little brown maverick Is winking her eye Oh, what a beautiful morning Oh, what a beautiful day I got a beautiful feeling All the sounds of the earth are like music. All the sounds of the earth are like music. The breeze is so busy, it don't miss a tree. And an old weeping willow is laughing at me. What a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I got a beautiful feeling. Everything's wonderful. Everything's beautiful. Everything's golden. Ben Crosby, friends, in the old craft music hall, getting a shortwave jaunt to the action acres of the world. You know, when we stop to think that in every corner of uh, the goodbye. globe, whether you... Goodbye. 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 No, I'm not leaving. I'm, I'm just saying goodbye to a relative. Goodbye. Hey, wait, wait. Do you have to holler like that? Oh, yeah. He's a distant relative. Oh. <laughs> goodbye. Uh, I wish you'd join him, making an excursion or something. Well, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't talk like that after I become famous. Don't you mean notorious? No, no, no. Don't you know a guy can get famous by just jumping off the Brooklyn Bridge? I'll buy that. Oh, right. <laughs> you could have quintuplets. You know, five daughters. I'll buy that. I think <laughs> I'm going to write a book. No sale. Oh. Imagine Yuki writing a book. Little Yuki. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> Listen, you know, when it comes to writing, I've got something that Shakespeare didn't even have. What's that? A typewriter. <laughs> What's the book going to be about, Yuki? Uh, my life. It's very commercial. There's a big market now for horror stories. <laughs> Somehow, you know, I can't imagine you writing a book about yourself, Yuki. You don't know enough important people. Oh, no, Trudy, just a minute. You're wrong there. I'll have to speak for Yuki on this. Well, you don't have to, Bing. Look, Miss Irwin, you know that famous picture, Frankenstein meets the wolf man? Yes. Yuki introduced him. Well. <laughs> you know, I expect to mention all my friends in the book. One friend on, on every page. What's on page two? <laughs> My picture. Great finish, great finish. Well, of course, there's one important thing about writing a book, Yuki. There's one thing you have to have. What? You have to have a publisher. Oh, I have one. Who? Uh, Simon and Shh. <laughs> Simon and who? Simon and Shh. Well, I've heard of Simon, but uh, who is Shh? Silent partner. <laughs> I think when he hears his partners publishing your book, we're going to hear from him. Uh, well, why condemn my book before you've, you've even seen it? Probably condemning it before you've even written it, huh? Mm. How much of it have you got? Uh, just the title. What's it called? Inside Yuki. <laughs> 
You know what you need for that thing, really, to, to push it, to exploit it? You need a musical foreword. I'll, I'll, I'll write you one. Oh, well, don't go to any trouble. No trouble. I'll knock it right off. How's this? Uh, Here is a book. Oh, what a book. What a very special book written by a little snook. Just a little snook named Yook. Better read this book. Nice. <laughs> nice foreword, huh? Uh, who wrote that foreword in Hope's book? You mean the flattering one in, in They Got Me Covered? Yeah, that flattering one that was signed by you. Who wrote it? Hope. <laughs> I think he's my man. Huh? See him. <laughs> Bye. While Yuki waits Hope's return from North Africa, we turn to a tune written by one of our KMH colleagues, Perry Bodkin, John Scott Trotter's able guitarist. Perry wrote this in cahoots with a couple of servicemen, a couple of boys named Schwartz and Bush Allo. They call it Riding Herd on a Cloud. This old world is stampeding, said a lad what it's needing is a cow hand in the sky. So I'm through roping doggies. Let's corral those axis bogies. Give me a horse that can fly. Now he's riding herd on a cloud tonight. Left his spurs and his saddle on the range with his cattle. And he's now in flight With a crew of hardy hustlers On the lookout for some rustlers Who might be sneaking up on Uncle Sam Gave his horse up in trade for a course on how to saddle a plane and fly. Now he's in for the duration, kayai yipping in formation with the cowboys of the sky. Someone back home feeling mighty proud. Praise for him riding herd. On a cloud tonight. Hey, Perry. Much Perry, that's nice. Much that's nice tune, Perry. Thank you. You like it, Ken? Oh, very much. Is that all you have to say? Oh, hardly. We'll come up with something. Well, these days, conscientious homemakers are being especially careful not to waste any food. For food is a vital weapon of war. It's our duty to use all we have, even the smallest leftovers. Salads are one of the best of all ways to use small amounts of leftover vegetables. You'll find almost any vegetables taste good together in a salad with Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip has an utterly different, delightful flavor you get in no other dressing, a flavor that's made it America's big favorite. Miracle Whip combines the qualities of zesty boiled dressing and fine mayonnaise. You just don't know what treats your nutritious salads can be till you taste them with Miracle Whip. Look for it at your food store. Creamy, golden Miracle Whip salad dressing. I love life. I want to live. I love, love. Whoa, singing songs in a cabaret, and was I having fun? Until one night, I didn't sing right, and now I'm on the run. Whoa, lay that pistol down, babe, lay that pistol down. Pistol pack and mama, lay that pistol down. Never flirt with a gal named Tess down old Texas way. Cause if you do, I'm telling you, here's what you'll have to say. Lay that pistol down, babe. Lay that pistol down. Lay that pistol down. pistol back in the mama. Lay that pistol down. Now listen to 
the story of a red-haired gal named Peg. Oh, she shot a pistol in the air and hit me in the leg. Lay that pistol down, babe. Lay that pistol down. Pistol packing, mama. Lay that pistol down. Lay that pistol down, babe, lay that pistol down. Pistol back in my mouth, lay that pistol down. Lay that pistol down, babe, lay that pistol down. Pistol back in my mouth, lay that pistol No new name around the old craft music hall, and a familiar face in many a cinema, my friend Frank McHugh, like most of Shodham's gentry, can be found in his spare time, traveling from camp to camp, entertaining our armed forces. Tell me, Frank, on those trips, how do you spend most of your time on the train? I read. You read? With all those showgirls to look at, you read? What do the other members of the company do? I read. <laughs> <laughs> You care to divulge the nature of your reading matter? The Drover Boys. The Drover? Are they still active, the Drover Boys? Oh, the dauntless Drovers go on and on. Only last night I finished The Drover Boys in a War Plant, or Frozen at Lockheed with Blowtorch and Overtime. <laughs> is that their last book? Oh, no, no. Their last book is The Drover Boys in a Calcutta Delicatessen, or Watching the Swami Salam the Salami. <laughs> I love to read about those fearless lads setting forth on another dangerous mission fraught with peril. Who knows what lies ahead as Tom Grover gathers his brothers together and says, Let us go down to the beach this evening, Dick. <laughs> they say the Grunion are running at Santa Monica. <laughs> How jolly, Tom. Wager me five on the favorite. The show, of course. Can you bet four? <laughs> for the benefit of... For... <laughs> for the benefit of those who have not read earlier volumes in the Drover Boys series, there were three in number. As a baby, Dauntless Dick had fallen on a picket fence and ever since then had suffered from a split personality. <laughs> Fun loving Tom. Oh, fun loving Tom. Oh, he always kept his ear on the alert and his teeth in a glass of water. <laughs> One morning, Tom said, Dick, do you suppose we shall ever hear from Ramona again? <laughs> As our old readers will remember, Tom Drover was attracted to Ramona Lightfinger, an old Indian shoplifter. <laughs> This infatuation went back to Tom's early school days at Filthy Hall, <laughs> when the sophomore class voted Ramona their favorite over a dish of chow mein girl, Cantonese style. <laughs> Naturally, Ramona's sentimental attachment for Tom soon ripened into disgust. This happened the night the lights went out at her home. In a moment of madness, Tom drew her over to the Davenport and said... Sit there and muse. I shall run for a fuse. <laughs> Dick Grover, too, had fallen in love. It happened the day he met Dora Glandhope in the delicatessen shop between a barrel of smoked salmon and a tub of pickled herring. Rushing toward her, the devil may care, Dick cried. Hello. <laughs> Shocked at Dick's forward manner and his backward ways, Dora walked out of the delicatessen with a firm step and three pounds of gefilte fish. <laughs> then reconsidering, Dora turned and said with her soft, red lips, parted, well, shut my mouth. <laughs> Dora's voice was changing. But her heart was true. Dick's gratitude knew no bounds as he grabbed her hand and wrung it. She had loud hands. <laughs> Soon, however, into their idyllic relationship crept a sinister note. Dora became infatuated with Dan Daxter, 
the bully who used to torment the Drover boys. He came to school every day accompanied by a big, ferocious dog, a practice the authorities soon put a stop to when the dog graduated. <laughs> but, of course, Dan Daxter continued to plague our heroes as told in the Drover Boys in Flatbush or Who Threw the Blibber at Captain Bibber? <laughs> as he stooped over to pick up the blibber, Tom Drover received a welcome telegram from the West saying that Grandpa Drover, the Icebox King, had left them a cool million. <laughs> Hurrah! cried Tom. <laughs> now we shall have enough money to buy corduroy uniforms for our yo-yo team. <laughs> Thus it was that the Drover boys broke their necks to get out West, as told in the Drover boys at a chiropractor's or... The Trail of the Lonesome Spine. <laughs> On their way west, they were surrounded by savage redskins. Poisoned arrows and tomahawks were flying at them from all directions. It looked hopeless, but Tom, fine, determined, manly Tom, looked the situation over coolly and with determination cried, Help! <laughs> Dick dropped to his knees and started shooting. Boxcars on the first roll. <laughs> Climbing aboard one of these boxcars... The drovers continued on their way until Dick caught sight of a designing woman. He looked at her quizzically and knit his brow. Well, he didn't exactly knit it. He knit one and pearled one. <laughs> a nice design, which caught the designing woman to say, Let me give you a kiss, honey. I'll show you all what they mean by the solid south. <laughs> In no time at all, the seductive stranger had driven Dick to distraction. A small salmon canning town, 20 miles distant. <laughs> there, reaching for a mustard jar at a nearby hamburger stand, Dick mustered his nerve and murmured, Your lips fascinate me. See, they look so luscious. Are they really so warm? Why don't you all find out? I will. You wait here. I'll go get a thermometer. <laughs> And reaching for a piece of celery, which was also on the hamburger stand, Dick stalked out. As Dora Glanhope entered, embarrassed, Dick's fine blue blood surged to his cheeks as he said, You like me in blue serge? <laughs> and in truth, the blue serge did reflect the shine in his eyes, for he could see Dora was jealous. Her Adam's apple was slowly turning green. Meanwhile, Dan Daxter's sister stood there, uncertainly, and shuffled her feet. Finding she had a pair of nine, she asked for a new deal. <laughs> and then realizing her number was up, she cried, Bingo! Turning to Dora, Dick whispered, Nobly, how can I ever thank you? Reaching demurely for a nearby garden hose, Dora flushed prettily, saying, Excuse me while I go and powder my nozzle. <laughs> People thought that in taking Dick back, Dora showed herself to have an open mind. Concerning Dora's open mind, the fun-loving Tom observed... She has a hole in the head. <laughs> adding... Dan Daxter and his equally fiendish sister shall never show their faces again. But the Daxters did show themselves again. And what they did to harm the Drover Boys will be told in another volume of this series entitled... The Drover Boys in Hollywood. Or at Sunset and Vine with Wolf and Stein. <laughs> Where every evening the drovers can be heard to sing. We've got six bits. Lucky, lucky six bits. We've got six bits. And no more to our name. We need two bits for keep. And two bits for sleep. And two bits to squander on a dame. Some dame, no cares have we to sadness. We want a little girl to gladden us. Although we're on a lark, there's no bad in us. We're only looking for a dame. 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 By the light of the silvery moon. Oh, happy is the day when a pigeon strolls our way. For we're just waiting for a dame. But the Army and Navy have the best ones. And we're left looking for a day. I'm Martin.
Watch his back. 1913. Beef is 28 cents a pound, and domestic servants are demanding $35 a month. 1913. Income tax comes in with exemptions of $3,000 and $4,000. 1913. And men reading their Sunday newspapers can be heard muttering. Hmm. Parcel post system goes into operation. If I ever... Daddy! Have... Will you read me the cats and jammer kids? If I ever use that parcel post... Will again... you, Daddy? Hmm? Read me, Foxy Grandpa. Hmm? Will you? Oh, go tell your mother she wants you. That's what she told me to tell you she did. Well, go... <laughs> go anyway. Well, I'm busy. Gee whiz, Daddy. Ain't you glad you got a little girl? Yes, yes, of course. But this parcel post, if I ever send a package by parcel what, post, I what's, hope... What's parcel post? What's hmm? the difference? It's no good. Well, the post office department starts this parcel post service, and the day it starts, I look in the paper and I see a horse is running. His name is Natty Parcel. Well, what did you want Natty Parcel to do, Daddy? Win the race, honey. It was a hunch, see? Natty Parcel, Parcel Post. Did he win it? Left at the post. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, Harry, what are you saying to that child? Well, I was just telling her that I thought... Don't talk, nice Daddy. Time. Don't talk. Sing like you do in the shower. Go ahead, will you? Hmm? If I had my way, dear, forever there'd be a garden of roses for you and for me. A thousand and one things. Just for you, for you, just for you, just for you. If I had my way, you would never grow old. And sunshine I'd bring every day. Every day. You would rain all alone. Like a queen on a And a friend in the 1913 hit song, If I Had My Way. We reach now the point where Ken has his way. When you ask yourself, as every good American must, whether you're doing all you possibly can to help win the war, when you ask that, here's something to remember. Your government is urging every one of us to cooperate wholeheartedly with the National Nutrition Program. Urging it because good health depends on good nutrition. And the nation needs strong, vigorous men and women at home to back up our fighting forces. 
So you're not doing all you can to hasten victory unless you're following the rules of good nutrition, eating the right foods in the right amounts every single day. That's the only way to maintain the strength and stamina so essential in a nation at war. Here are the foods our government asks us to eat daily, the basic foods that will keep America strong. Fruits and vegetables, especially green and yellow vegetables, tomatoes and citrus fruits, milk or cheese, meat, poultry, fish or eggs, butter or fortified margarine, enriched bread and cereals. Those, ladies, are the fighting foods you should serve your family every day. Many of them, you'll notice, are foods that taste particularly good in salads. And salads, remember, taste best with creamy, zestful Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip, the famous salad dressing millions prefer. We lived a dream by a blue mountain stream in Nevada. Millions of stars were exclusively ours that night. Your heart was part of my heart in the heart of Nevada. Tulips divine were so willingly mine that night. There on our hilltop with nothing but heaven around us We lost ourselves in a heavenly moonbeam Till sunrise found us We fell in love, oh so madly in love In Nevada We lived a dream by a blue mountain stream that night. That's the entire Craft Music Hall. Job for this Thursday evening, friends. Next Thursday, same time in the same spot, we're all going to meet again. All being Trudy Irwin, John Scott Trotter and Group, the Music Maids and Hal, the Charioteers, and two special added starters of considerable importance. One of the cinema's newest comedians, Phil Silvers, and radio's poet laureate, Falstaff Openshaw. Boy, we're loaded next week, aren't we? That's next Thursday. Until then, start getting in shape to help back the attack with the third war loan. Got your part to do, do it as well as your army, Navy, Marines, and Coast Guard are doing their parts. Good night. Craft Music Hall next Thursday at this same time to hear Bing Crosby, Trudy Irwin, John Scott Trotter and his orchestra, the Music Maids and Hal, the Charioteers, and being special guests for the evening, Bill Silvers and Paul Staff Openshaw. The Craft Music Hall comes to you from Hollywood's Radio City. The afternoon just fled, and I have a family waiting to be fed. Lady, you can still be a winner. Take my tip. Try Kraft Dinner, a seven-minute dish that's sure to please. Gives you really swell macaroni and cheese. Yes, ma'am. Spend one red ration point and get three boxes of Kraft Dinner. That's delicious macaroni and cheese for three separate dinners. Every package of Kraft Dinner gives you fast-cooking macaroni and some Kraft grated for tangy cheese flavor. Just seven minutes with the clock, and you've cooked up some fluffy, tender macaroni with cheese flavor through and through. Try it soon. Kraft Dinner. The Seal Test Village Store will follow immediately over most of these same stations from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>